Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we'll be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Berkshire Hathaway Inc. Ticker symbol BRKA as well as BRKB. Berkshire has two classes of stock, both their A and their B shares. At the time of recording this video, Berkshire A shares trade for nearly $457,000 per share. That is the highest dollar cost per share of any stock on the New York Stock Exchange. So year to date, Berkshire is up about 2%. They were up significantly more to this, although that's come down in recent days. Over the past year, Berkshire is also up about 6%. Going back 10 years, Berkshire has returned about 15% compounded annually, nearly tripling your money there. And over the past 17 years, Berkshire is up about 10% compounded annually. So right now, Berkshire's stock price is right between its 52-week high and its 52-week low. Berkshire Hathaway is one of the largest businesses in the world with a 677 billion dollar market cap. Just an absolutely huge business. It's amazing what Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have been able to build, as well as the fact that they're still performing at a high level, even at 92 and 98 years old. So for some background about the business, Berkshire Hathaway, if you haven't heard of it, is a holding company with a wide array of subsidiaries engaged in diverse activities. The firm's core business segment is insurance run primarily through Geico, Berkshire Hathaway Reinsurance Group, and Berkshire Hathaway Primary Group. Berkshire has used the excess cash thrown off from these and its other operations over the years to acquire the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad, Berkshire Hathaway Energy, and the firms that make up its manufacturing, service, and retailing operations, which include five of Berkshire's largest non-insurance pre-tax earning generators, Precision Cast Parts, Lubrizol, Clayton Homes, Marmon, and ISCAR. The conglomerate is unique in that it is run on a completely decentralized basis. In addition to this, Berkshire also has about a $370 billion stock portfolio that has major holdings in Apple, Bank of America, Moody's, Coca-Cola, and Chevron, among others. So our fun fact before we get into our fundamental analysis, which will look at Berkshire's financials, is how Warren Buffett came to buy the business in the first place. In 1962, Warren Buffett began buying shares of Berkshire because he thought the business was selling at a discount to its actual value after noticing a pattern in the price direction of its stock whenever the company closed a textile mill. Eventually, Buffett acknowledged that the textile business was waning and the company's financial situation was not going to improve. In 1964, Seabury Stanton, Berkshire's CEO, made a verbal tender offer of $11.50 per share for the company to buy back Buffett's shares. Buffett agreed to the deal. A few weeks later, Buffett received the tender offer in writing, but the tender offer was only for $11.38, so $11.35.5. Buffett later admitted that this lower, undercutting offer made him angry. Instead of selling at the slightly lower price, Buffett decided to buy more of the stock to take control of the business and fire Stanton, which is exactly what he did, and the rest is history. So with that history lesson, let's get right into Berkshire's financials and analyze this bad boy. Starting off with pillar number one, we want Berkshire's average five-year P.E. to be below 22 and a half. So P.E. is not going to be the most relevant to Berkshire due to some changes that the IRS and SEC made in 2017 that forces Berkshire to report their unrealized gains and losses in their public stock portfolio as being part of their earnings. So that's why you see these large fluctuations here on their five-year P.E. Berkshire currently trades for about eight times earnings, and their average five-year P.E. is just over 20. So that's going to be a check on pillar number one, even though it's not the most applicable here. Next up, pillar number two, we want Berkshire's average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. So here it's had its swings, but it still averages out to 10.4%. So that's going to be our second check. So far, so good. Two for two on pillars one and two. Pillar number three, we want to see five-year revenue growth. And we do indeed. In 2017, Berkshire had $240 billion of revenue, and that increased to $276 billion in 2021. Pillar number four, we want to see five-year net income growth. Again, this is affected by Berkshire's stock portfolio. Here we see that they've increased their net income over the last five years. So another check on pillar number four. Four for four so far. Next up, pillar number five, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. We don't want a business to be issuing new shares and diluting existing shareholders. 
which ultimately means that you're entitled to a smaller ownership percentage of the business. So over the past two years, Buffett has been buying back a lot of Berkshire stock, especially in the peaks of this bull market where we saw some of the highest historical valuations ever. Buffett has publicly stated at some of Berkshire's annual meetings that he's most comfortable buying back Berkshire share when it trades below 1.2 or 1.3% of book value. And so even though it traded for a little bit more than that, over this time frame, Buffett still thought that buying back Berkshire stock was the most attractive thing he could do with nearly $150 billion of float from their insurance business. So he did that, and as a result, existing shareholders now have a greater ownership percentage of Berkshire than they did previously. That's a check on pillar number five. Next up for pillar number six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. It can be used to buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, reinvest in the business, and pay dividends, which Berkshire does not do. Free cash flow is this column in green here. So over five years, Berkshire has not grown their free cash flow. This is going to be our first X. Uh, and this looks like it was due to a pretty outstanding year in 2017. So not a lot to worry about here, even though that's our first X. Averaged out over five years, Berkshire produces about $26.5 billion of free cash flow in an average year. So that is simply monstrous. There's really only a handful of businesses that do that in the entire world. So pillar number seven, we want Berkshire's net debt to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. We're not going to show the chart. Instead, we're going to look at the actual highlighted numbers here. So in the last 12 months, Berkshire has shifted its position from having negative net debt, which means that it would have had cash and equivalents left on hand after paying off all their debt. Now they actually have $13 billion of net debt. However, that is easily paid off with their free cash flow. Multiplying their average five-year free cash flow times five brings us to $132.5 billion, which is 10 times the amount of net debt that they have. So Berkshire has an ironclad Rock of Gibraltar type balance sheet. Really easy check on pillar number seven. Finally, pillar number eight, the big pillar of them all. We want Berkshire's market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 20. So Berkshire currently has a market cap of $677 billion. So we do want to make an adjustment here. And that is that Berkshire has a nearly $370 billion stock portfolio. So if we backed out their stock portfolio, their market cap would be about $307 billion, multiplying their average five-year free cash flow of $26.5 billion times 20 brings us to a free cash flow valuation of $530 billion. So with their stock portfolio, that's a value of about $900 billion dollars. So that's a huge check on pillar number eight. So in summary, Berkshire checks the box on seven out of eight pillars. They have a solid foundation financially, and they only miss on free cash flow growth due to an atypical 2017. Financially, Berkshire is one of the strongest businesses in America. They have an earning stream that's incredibly diversified, and they're still able to earn above average returns on capital. They're still growing, not to mention that they have $100 billion of float from their insurance business that Warren Buffett is still looking to be able to put to work. So Berkshire is an ironclad battleship. It looks attractive based on its free cash flow profile. And with the rest of the market in turmoil, Berkshire could be comparable to buying an S&P 500 index because of how large and how diversified it is. However, that's not a recommendation. Thing in this analysis is a recommendation to go out and buy Berkshire stock. Warren Buffett himself has never recommended purchasing Berkshire stock to anyone. Instead, he recommends buying an S&P 500 index and dollar cost averaging into that over time if you're not willing to do the work and learn more about businesses in the stock market. If you are, I highly recommend starting with Berkshire's annual shareholder letters. They go all the way back to 1965 and have a treasure trove of business acumen and financial literacy in there. Also, a pretty easy way to get a better understanding of Berkshire is to watch through their annual shareholders meetings. They're posted on YouTube and they go back all the way to the mid 90s. Those meetings feature Warren and Charlie answering about every question you could imagine thrown at them related to Berkshire or otherwise. And one of the amazing things about studying Berkshire and really learning about Warren and Charlie as, as people is that they've been able to accomplish these amazing financial results 
And at the same time, they're both pretty good guys as well. And they have a lot to say about how people can improve their lives. So that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Berkshire Hathaway Inc. Ticker symbols BRKA and BRKB. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next. Berkshire was a subscriber request, so thanks for learning about Berkshire and have a great day.